All right, good morning. Uh, we're starting a new project today. It's called the Monitor. Uh, it's for monitoring your different web applications that are made in .NET or your NTR services layers um, to make sure that the different components are uh, still online. So for example, I have an application built called Ali Chat. I think it's got nine or 10 different microservices. Um, it's a little bit challenging uh, to figure out when a microservice goes up or down because the whole application doesn't go up or down. So what we're developing today is a web application called the Monitor. And um, that what it's going to do is it's got a plugin for .NET so that you can add it to a project and then it'll ping back out to the web API every so often and register that the application is up and running. We're going to add in a function so that you can have a URL and maybe credentials that you're going to hit. Um, and then uh, we're going to be doing an identity server four for the authorization server on it with an Angular CLI front end. We're going to be making the uh, web application in Angular CLI. We have a web API in ASP.NET Core. I don't know if we're going to use 3.0 or 2.1. Most everything I've been doing is 2.2, but we might use the newer one. Um, yeah, if you have any questions, pop them in the chat. Uh, let's go ahead and get going. So. Uh, the first thing I need to do is map out what it is that I'm making. So I'm going to start here with an application called my Identity Server 4, which is going to be my authorization server. Okay, And my authorization server is going to have a database that it's connected to called and we can do this like that. And we can call this um, identity. So we're going to say this is identity DB. Okay. The next thing that we're going to have is a web API. So we'll duplicate this one. And a web API is exposed publicly. So we'll have this here called my resource server. And we're going to say that this is an ASP.NET 3.0 web API. Okay. And this is going to probably be connected to, we're going to also need to have a, a, a front end. We're going to say that this is my web application. And this is going to be done in Angular CLI. Okay. And then also, we're going to have a Uh, we're going to have a static content site, which is going to be a ASP.NET Core 3.0 uh, MVC site. Okay. So our web API is going to, well, our static front facing site is going to connect to the identity database here. And this is going to be done for when we register new users. So we're going to say that this is my user services, which includes register and password forget and uh, username forget. Depending on if we allow more than third party authorization. Okay. The resource server is going to have a web API down here. This is the main application database. And we're going to be using SQL Server for that. Okay. <clears throat> and so the resource server needs to connect here to the database. And then we're going to have a Okay. And then we're going to have the Angular CLI site, which is going to be connected to the web API.
And just another second, my static content site like that. And then my static content site is going to connect to the Angular CLI site so for uh, login. So this is our basic infrastructure here. Our Angular CLI strut is going to connect to the resource server there. Okay, so this is our basic application and everything that's public facing. Um, so additionally, in this thing, we need to have a plugin. So down here, I can add this, and we can drag these things out a little bit, and we can add a title on this, which is my web application. Okay. The next one is that we're going to, how do I save it? Have the plugin. And the plugin is going to go inside of all of your web API, inside all of your apps. So for example, I'm going to have one here called AC Identity. And then I'm going to have one here called AC Web API. And then we'll have one called polling. And then I'll have one here called open DJ radio. So all of these are going to have this plugin that we're going to write. And this is going to be on NuGet. And this is called my the minotar net plugin. Sorry, it's called the monitor plugin. And what the plugin's going to do is it's going to say, okay, periodically. So we're going to have some kind of a timer here. And when that thing hits, so let's use a conditional for that. Um, this one. This one here. So I'm going to say that this is my timer. So that when this hits, it's going to post to the web API. So what that means is, am I going to use SignalR to ping monitor connections? I may use SignalR. Um, I may use WebSocket. I may I may use Web API. I may use all of them. So we're going to see here in just a minute what I'm gonna, what I come up with. So this is going to post a status to the Web API. Now, do we want to have a backup connection on this? So we also want to do a background service here. So we can add this dotted line here to represent my public and my private facing. Like that, okay? And on this, we're going to have this as a 
persistent connection server. No problem, it's gonna be open source when it's completed. And the persistent connection server here is gonna be done with WebSocket, SignalR, TCP. We're not sure yet which one we're gonna use. And we want this to connect to here. Okay. And so we're going to have here a text box which says persistent connection ping. Okay. We also want to include a note up here which we want to say is a note link to ntier.net. So when you are running your web application and you register a new app here, and that could be could be many instances of the app, right? For that, we want to say that that's going to be done with a client ID and secret, I'm imagining. Because everything's going to be running on the server side. So if I'm running these down here, these are all going to be assigned a client ID and secret. And that's going to be how these are registered to the get their token here. So we're going to want this plugin here to connect to my authorization server. And that this is going to be done with a um, client credentials flow. I think, hold on. But you're going to want everybody here to get their client credentials when they register. So when you register here, you're going to want to, you need to add, so when you're going to register here, you need to add a new client credentials application for the user. For their plugins. Okay. So when you register, it's going to create a new client credentials application in the identity server. So that when you log in with the monitor, this is going to want to have a client ID and client secret for the application user. And so this is now going to know which one of its client secrets and IDs it is. So the plugin's there, it has the client ID and the secret, and now gets authorized up here. 
it sends this out. It's got the credentials it needs to So this is going to be something called a client key. And this could be a client ID and a secret. Or just a identifier. So this is also going to need, in addition to the client ID and the secret, it's going to need the client key for the current application. So up here, that looks right. Okay, just another second here. So the only other thing is that you want to have something that pulls individual sites. So up here, when you register your application for polling, So when we register the application, we want to have a option for persistent polling. We want to have an option here for post to web API status. And we want to have an option here for get A URL. Now down here we want to have this thing interface this plugin so custom logic can be added For example, a get with authorization. Now the other thing I want to do is like a get URL to make sure that the URL is up and running because the application could be running. So to do that, A second. We're going to say in here think about authorization on URL. Uh, receive client key. Okay. If I look at this anymore, I think we're pretty good. I mean, we could do this with authorization. So that's that's something we definitely can do. But I believe that this will accomplish what I'm looking for. So my web application here will include a table of applications and instances. And that's going to have on it some indicators. if pinging and we have something for our time since last update
And I think that this is gonna work. So let's just uh, clean this up just a little bit. We'll move everything into one page. Like that. And we're good to go. So this is what we're going to be creating here.